Mydysphagia treatment is the Masako maneuver, and it is also sometimes called the tongue hold maneuver. Even though it is referred to as a maneuver, it is actually an oral motor exercise, and therefore the Masako maneuver includes actions of the muscles that are involved in swallowing to influence the physiologic underpinnings of the oral pharyngeal mechanism. The Masako Maneuver was introduced by Geraldine Loebman and Masako Fuju around 1996 as a pharyngeal strengthening exercise. This technique is mainly performed to strengthen its function of pushing food boluses from the oral cavity to the pharynx by strengthening the contact between the tongue base and the laryngopharyngeal wall. The Masako Maneuver begins with having the patient in as much of an upright position as you can get them. So sitting or leading up in the bed is fine. This exercise is then performed by having the patient protrude their tongue between their front teeth maximally and then having them gently bite down on their tongue um, gently and maintaining that position while they swallow saliva. You don't use um, food or liquid in this exercise. So to a patient you would say stick out your tongue as far as you can um, and then gently bite down on your tongue and I want you to just swallow the saliva that's in your mouth. Um, and so now for the demonstration, Mary Allison, stick out your tongue between your front teeth as far as you can and hold, hold it gently between your teeth. While holding that position, I want you to just swallow the saliva that's in your mouth. Great job. That was one. And let's see if you can do it two more times. Great job. Okay, so in, treat, in treatment, this exercise would be completed as many times as the SLP deems necessary for the patient. Um, whether that's five or ten times, again, it just depends on what the SLP feels is best for that patient. Um, and it can be used in conjunction with other oral motor exercises as well. Um, so the candidates for this treatment are patients who have known pharyngeal weakness, for instance, the, if the findings from an MBS evaluation were that there were, was incomplete contact between the posterior pharyngeal wall and the base of the tongue, this would be a good exercise to use um, with that patient. However, if you don't have an MBS evaluation to refer to but have noticed pooling of saliva or food in the patient's throat, which might be indicated by gurgly um, or wet voice, this exercise might benefit the patient as well. The treatment rationale is that by pulling the tongue forward and holding that position during swallowing, the Masako maneuver results in the increased contraction of the pharyngeal constrictor and it increases posterior pharyngeal wall um, movement. So this change will increase the ability to push the bolus through the oral cavity and into the pharynx by strengthening the contact between the tongue base and the pharyngeal wall. The increased strength of these muscles will help to decrease the risk of dysphagia and aspiration in our patients. For um, the evidence-based practice, uh, the first article that I reviewed came from the Journal of Physical Therapy. It was published in 2016, and they reviewed the Masako Maneuver as well as neuromuscular electrical stimulation in patients with dysphagia caused by strokes. And swallowing recovery um, for the Masako Maneuver was reported with the Functional Dysphagia Scale, the FDS, based on video fluoroscopic studies. Um, the Masako Maneuver and the neuromuscular electrical stimulation each showed significant effects on the improvement of swallowing function for the patients um, who had dysphagia caused by stroke, and there was really no significant difference um, as well or between the two treatment methods. Um, they did go on to point out that the Masako maneuver specifically improves the constriction of the pharynx by strengthening the muscles of the tongue base, and it also improves swallow function by helping to improve the coordination of the larynx and the hyoid bone, and it also improves constriction of the pharynx and the airway obstruction during the pharyngeal phase of the swallow. And the second um, article that I reviewed came from the Journal of Dysphagia. It was published in 2014, and it evaluated the Masako or tongue hold maneuver um, using electromyography. And the researchers hypothesized that the Masako maneuver would increase tongue and pharyngeal muscle activity, but that pharyngeal pressure would remain the same. And that is basically what they found um, when the study was conducted. So I'm going to quote from the study now because I really like the way that they synthesized this information. Um, and again, this is in regards to the Masako maneuver and the physiologic underpinnings of swallow function. 
and they go on to say, it is likely that oropharyngeal sensory receptors respond to the altered tongue position to provide medullary swallow intraneurons with feedback needed to coordinate the movement and position of the superior pharyngeal constrictor and tongue. These neuromuscular mechanisms may account for the observed increase in superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle activity in the presence of the tongue hold maneuver. And so the researchers go on to say that although the tongue hold maneuver may be a relatively simple oral motor exercise, it is a robust example of how the medullary swallow center is equipped to dynamically coordinate actions between the various muscle groups. Um, and now I'm going to just briefly explain some other tongue-based retraction exercises um, that are used to strengthen the tongue base. And again, um, these exercises are typically repeated, um, you know, five to 10 times. Again, it's at the discretion of the SLP. And the first one um, is going to be tongue retraction. So for this one, you would have the patient retract their tongue and touch the back of the, their um, tongue to the roof of their mouth as if they're producing K or K. So they would retract the tongue K and pull it back as if they're producing K. And you can have them produce the K sound if you want to. Um, for this exercise, I am going to have Mary Allison produce the K sound. All right, so Mary Allison, I want you to um, pull your tongue back in your mouth as if to the roof of your mouth, as if you are producing the k sound. And I want you to actually produce that k sound for me. K. Great job. And let's do that three times. K. 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 Great job. All right. The next one is the gargle exercise. And so for this one, you would have the patient pull their tongue as far back in their mouth as they can and pretend to gargle hard and then release. So let's see if I can try to gargle. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I can't gargle. I want saliva. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just let her try it. Okay. <laughs> Good job. And that was the gargle exercise. All right. The next one is the tongue pull back. So you would have the patient stick out their, stick their tongue straight out and then pull it as far back in their mouth as they can and hold it for two seconds. So they would do this. Again, they're sticking that tongue straight out and they're retracting it back kind of like we did for that very first one um, and they're holding it for two seconds. So Mary Allison, I want you to stick your tongue straight out and then pull it back as far as you can in your mouth um, and hold it for two seconds. Great job, let's do that two more times. Great job. Our last one is the yawn. So for this one, you would just have the patient yawn and hold their mouth open as wide as they can for one second. All right, so yawn. <laughs> Mary Allison, I want you to yawn and hold your mouth open as wide as you can for about one second. Okay, and maybe one more time. <laughs> All right, great job. Okay, so that was the Masako maneuver as well as some other tongue-based retraction exercises that you can use. Thank you.